Ooh, look at what we just got. This is our brand new Rhino Shelter. It's a two-car garage, basically. Yes, a pop-up tent that's going to be nice for us to work under, yeah. paint under. Do all, Gina will be able to get all kinds of things done under there at night time. Yeah, I'm super excited. We've been waiting <laughs> a while for this to come, and today is a special day. Man, they really packaged this nice. Yeah, they did. There's seven different separate boxes for this package that we got, and we didn't lose any, so that's a good thing. Bonus, we get a pallet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put that to good use. Yeah, so this thing is 22 by 24 right mm -hmm. yeah and it's really cool too because it's got galvanized uh... man those look heavy duty that's a little bit thicker than our uh harbor freight tent that we had yeah that's that kept a... blowing over all every time the wind would blow a little a bit a lot better looks like there's some anchor poles right there Here's that cables you can drive these into the ground and then the cables come out of the ground to keep this thing locked down. What we're really looking for is some directions. <laughs> Hardware. <laughs> That's a lot of it. We'll give that to Harrison to play with. <laughs> this is our Hollywood Haunter sign. <laughs> that hangs in front of it. <laughs> it says, a roll-up door. Ooh, fancy. Hey, instructions. Nice. I think that there's just some flaps in the opening, so this is nice because it's a little setup that we can just pull a string and the, the front will roll up. Cool, it's got some pictures. That's always helpful. This one came down with a big clank, so I'm thinking it's yeah. more poles. <laughs> These things are called rhino shelters for a reason. Yes. They're as heavy as a rhino. Yeah. <laughs> Good work table to put all this stuff on. Have you, have you lifted a lot of rhinos in well, your they lifetime? Look heavy. <laughs> I like how this is all boxed up and mm -hmm. separated too, yes, instead of coming nice. like in one box. Yeah. Because you can kind of just grab what from it need? as you're as you're building. This came all the way from Connecticut. I thought it came from North Carolina, and oh, then went up to Connecticut, oh, okay. and then down. Hey, nice. We got the tan color. Yep. There's a gray and a green, and yep. we got the tan because I thought it blended into our desert landscape the best the desert landscape i wish we had match, green <laughs> match a lot of the stucco houses around yep, here yep exactly we thought it would be less of an eyesore <laughs> hey it just got done raining so there is some green yeah that's true oh yeah that's nice this one got inspected by a cat <laughs> Nice too because this is 12 foot tall, so we're going to be able to stand a lot of our walls up and stuff that we make for our, for our haunted house facade. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa! I thought it was a cannon for a second. <laughs> Man, these these are beefy <laughs> and heavy too. Yeah. It does get a little bit windy out here. A so little we, bit? <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> and so we wanted to make sure we Simi didn't... Valley means wind, for those of you who don't know. Windy Valley. <laughs> Which we learned after we moved yes, here. We, did. <laughs> we, did. we didn't really tell you guys the truth. This is Harrison's new play fort. <laughs> oh. Hey, More poles. Hey. So. Could be. The last box or second The last Holy box. Grail. Yeah, if you guys are want to start from the beginning, start with box two of six. Looks like we got a patch kit for the green tint. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully it'll be strong enough we'll never have to use it. There's no shortage of banding on this. Mm -mm. It's probably your front. Yeah. You ready to assemble this bad boy? Yeah. Let's do it. So as we're doing the inventory here, we decided to wipe away some of this grease on here so it doesn't get all over our tent as you pull it over. It's not too bad, but yeah. there is a little bit of residue on oil. there. Mm -hmm. Probably from storage and shipping and stuff, but it should be. Okay. Comes off super easy. Yeah. Last one. Yay! You did awesome. Yes. So it was a little bit time consuming, but I think it was worth it because it's not going to get the grease all over the, the tarp part of the tent. But these things are ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, you could pry up a car with one of these things. Look at the gauge on this. Whoa! All right. 
as you can tell, the reason why we needed a good tarp is because our landlord has this as a garage. It's like the little <laughs> rascal's garage. <laughs> it's pretty. It leaks in a like, yep. ton of places too. <laughs> it's it's good for storage, but that's about it. As long as everything's in a rubber tub and tarped. <laughs> I mean, look at this, you guys. <whistles> Fancy living. <laughs> I promise our house looks a little better than that, though. <laughs> All right, so it looks like I got 14 of the top straight supports right here, these big boys. It's nice because it's listed right there for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Top straight supports. And then right here, we got 10 of the center straight uprights. Okay. We have what looks like 14 of the bent tubes on mm -hmm. and we've got them lying in each side yep then we've got seven of the top crest tubes okay all wiped off four upright with foot with foot they look like guns big guns i know that these are for our two roll-up doors and, yeah our mm -hmm. two roll-up doors now this tent comes with one roll-up door and then you have to purchase an extra one if you want both sides to open up then we have four corner wind braces 25 of the in cross rails so we're good on that we have five of the other plain cross. in cross rails there you go the next thing i'm going to do is separate all my hardware because it's all mixed in one bag make sure i got all the pieces there's some different lengths bolts and nylock nuts and washers and all that kind of stuff so i'm gonna go make sure we have all that sounds good all right i got all my hardware all separated out looks like it's all accounted for they just have a couple different size uh bolts some longer ones some shorter ones their washers are really cool they're curved so they go around the bars and uh got nylock nuts that's really good so they don't uh loosen up on you and some end caps some u-bolts some turnbuckles I got the hardware for the uh, rolling doors, and then um, I got my earth anchors over there that I'm going to pound down into the ground using this rod and a, a sledgehammer. So supposedly all the tools I'm going to need for this project is a level, a large flat tip screwdriver, a sledgehammer, some 9 16 wrenches, socket. I'm going to go ahead and use an impact. I'm going to go through and put all the hardware in loose, uh, finger tight, and then go back in and carefully tighten everything with this impact just to make things go a little bit faster. But uh, you could just put this all together, looks like, with just a couple of wrenches. Good job, buddy. Yeah, you turned the nut on there. You helping dad? No, it's good. You did a good job. Whoops. Ooh. Get a washer. Whoa, that's heavy. Setting them down. Get a bolt. We're going to use all those bolts. There you go. Get a nut. Come on over here. All right. Woohoo! Careful. Put it in the other way. There you go. That that's a, the right way. Stick it in there. Almost through there. You gotta get it lined up so it goes on this side. Here. You can try that one instead. Here. Ooh. Almost. Straighten it up. There you go. Now put the bolt nut on there. All right. Twist. You got to twist, twist. There you go. You can try it like that. Make sure it works. Oh. <laughs> Almost. We're going to get this thing together someday, won't we? I don't know if we'll get it done before nap time, though. Nap time's coming up here pretty quickly. <laughs> All right! There's a lot of hardware left over. Yay! How many washers are you gonna put on your bolt? There's a couple there, thank you. This is so cool. 
He's got all the hardware lined up and in the holes for me. This is awesome. Oh, you missed one there. Don't worry though, I won't fire you. You're not fired yet. Oh, got a couple bolts there too. Man, I better, I better try to catch up with them. I'm getting behind. So, Harrison thought it was better if we just mixed them back up. I think it, he thought it was a little bit easier for him to do. So, now we're doing it that way. There's more than one way to do things, isn't there, son? All right, almost got it through. Yeah, use that one to hammer through. You gonna make your own hole? Yep. There might be a bolt or two missing when we're all finished. <laughs> one thing to note is these things actually really slide together pretty easy. I'm just doing this with one hand and the, the pipe itself is kind of heavy, but the thing is, is it slides right in and then you just line up your hole. Then after you get it all lined up, you put the round peg in the square hole. You can see the bolt heads contoured to match the pipe. Put the washer on, same thing. It's got a little bend to match the pipe. I'm actually just using the wrench after all. I'm not using the impact because you really don't have to get it that tight. You only have to make a couple turns and that thing's good to go. If there's any of the holes that are not lining up perfectly, you can just take a screwdriver, kind of move it around with that, and then put your bolt in. Make sure it's going the right direction here. Push it right in. It's kind of hard to do it one-handed while I'm sitting here holding the phone, but I haven't had any problems though. All the pipes have fit really nice so far. That's about it. Just made sure that the, the bolt poked out just a little bit and you're good to go. It's pretty common sense, but the direction said to always go through the top with the bolts. That way the head is on the outside and you have the, the nut on the inside. So when you pull your material over, you don't risk tearing anything on the ends of those bolts. The two ends have the uh, the bent legs, so I've got the front one all built right here. Then I've got the back one over there, and I've also started some of the other ones. The five arches in the center get those straight guys instead of the bent feet. And then the next thing to do is to start putting all my cross members on. You've got a few that have the same ends on both sides and those go on the very ends. And then I believe all these fill in the rest of it. So the next thing to do is to mount one of these to the two ends, which I've got one installed right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and stand this back arch up and just lean it against this wall here. All right, one thing that you gotta remember to do is put your little wind braces on the two outside arches on both sides. All right, Harrison and I got all these arches all together. Got everything tightened. The next thing to do is to start standing these things up. Just wanna let you guys know that it looks like there's no extra hardware, so if you have any little helpers like I did, just uh, be careful. So Gina and I got this first one all stood up and it wasn't too bad. Uh, it's cool because these little angle wind brackets here can actually help hold it up. We had some scrap plywood we just clamped into place just for uh, extra secureness. So the next thing to do is to take that pipe with the smaller end, climb up on a 10 foot ladder, and then uh, put it in that 
one there and at the same time running the bolt through both of the pipes the trick is going to be that two of us standing this up and then gina just holding it by herself while i run up the ladder and put a bolt inside the top of that there so this should be interesting All right, one important note to remember is that on the very outside arch, the uh, top cross brace here goes underneath, but then as it comes to the next one, it actually overlaps the top like that. And so on the next one, it'll stay on the top until it gets to the other end and then it'll go back under. The next thing is to add a piece of tubing, a couple pieces here, and then attach that wind brace there then we're going to add a level right there so again just like at the top you have to plug the two pipes together and then put your bolt in so down here that end of the pipe connects to there and then you slide the other pipe in and then run the bolt through the next leg and on this one you even have a another brace that connects at that point too. And you get all that done and then you do the next one and then the next one and the next one. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. <laughs> make sure there's no dirt in there. Yeah, I gotta make sure. We lost our little helper. He's we taking did. a nap. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd be done right now. That's right. He's the one who cracks the whip on us. It's actually a race. It's like, get it done while he's sleeping. <laughs> I'm so glad we wiped it off. My yeah, hands. it would have been really greasy. And you don't want to mess up that shirt. <laughs> no. <laughs> I got real dressed up. For this. <laughs> yes. This is, this is my nice fancy shirt. <laughs> We're going out. It's Friday night. Woo! Actually, I think I'm going to put that one in the rag box, babe, <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> I love you. Yeah, thanks. I love you, too. Oh, so I, you film what we're doing here. <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, you put it in. Make sure your square hole's lined up. And now this one, you do have to kind of lift up and move the leg over. You can see how soft our ground is. I did see on some pictures where some people put bricks or pieces of wood under each foot where it's going to go. I actually kind of like the idea of it digging into the dirt. I think it's going to stay put a little better for us. We'll see how this goes though. If we come out one morning and the legs all the way sunk to the, to the ground, we, we know we need to have a little cement block underneath. <laughs> All right, so you guys aren't sitting here watching us put one of these yeah. up for the next 30 minutes. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and fast forward and see you in a minute. Because I was afraid I was going to lose Gina. We actually just stood them all up real fast and got all those top bolts in. I still have to add all the framing on the two sides right here. Not, I haven't put any of this in. But since we had those first three, I was like, shoot, let's just... Stand them all up. Boom, 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 boom. It's actually sticking out quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is clear out some of that junk and see. Once I have all the bracing in here, we'll see if we can just slide it all back. Well, on YouTube, I saw some people, they just set some cardboard and wood down underneath each one of the feet. And they were able to slide it, you know, a couple feet back. So I think that's what we're going to do, too. This one. This one. All right. Awesome. Yay. Hammer. Stop. Hammer time. Whoa. Bang, bang, bang. Now you install these plugs. You can kind of push it in there a little bit. Then take a hammer. Just like so. 
That's another reason why it's important not to over tighten these bolts too much because if you squeeze that tube in too much, you may not be able to get the plugs inside. All right, so I got all my end caps all popped in. I've got some of the bolts all tightened up, most of them actually. Uh, they say in the instructions to leave some of the ones on the end loose. I went ahead and tightened them, but I can always loosen them later. So the next thing I'm gonna do now that I got this thing lined up straight is I'm gonna start putting these uh, little ground anchors in. And then once I get this side all locked on, I'll measure across and make sure I'm 22 feet and get that side all perfectly lined up. So these ground anchor bolts are pretty nice. It's got a little pocket here on the top that you can take this hammering rod and you just insert it inside the hole here and then drive it down with a sledgehammer wherever you want it. The instructions recommend to leave like 8 or 10 inches out of the ground and then you can wrap it around the pole. And they also suggest that the cable's on the inside of the tent as opposed to the outside of the tent. My guess is to protect the, the material from rubbing against it. Now the ground here is really, really soft. If you had a really rocky ground, you may have to pre-drill it with like a hammer drill and the long drill bit. But luckily in my case, it was super soft. Obviously the, you want the round side of the U-bolt to be on the outside where the tent material is gonna be. And then I just adjusted it. I uh, made sure my cable was pretty tight and uh, tested it. Yeah, that leg's not going anywhere except for down maybe. I'm gonna go through and install the rest of these. They recommend to do each leg. I was gonna do every other one but since they're so easy I'm gonna go ahead and do them all. One thing to mention on these U-bolts the nut size is half inch not 9 16th so you'll also need a, a half inch socket or a open end wrench. On these outside corners I just made sure that the U-bolts kinda of tilted inward so that the uh, protects the cover in the front and the cover on this side. So the next thing to do is to run a tape measure from that side to this side and I'm aiming for 22 feet and then I'm gonna now anchor this side down into the ground. Insert rod. Stick in ground. Use the persuader. The persuader. <laughs> you almost pushed this in. Look at this. I don't know if this is going to really prevent the tent from coming out. <laughs> well, <laughs> to be fair, it just rained for a week. So yeah, as soon as the, the ground dries up, there, it, that's not going anywhere. We put tents up after the rain. <laughs> tap it in. Tap, tap, tap it. Shoot, Harrison could hammer these in. To use the same stake for every... Yeah, what's okay. cool is you can pull it out. Now when we go to move someday and we take this down, I'm guessing I'll just use like a fence post digger or something to uh, get them out. Get it out. After it rains though, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll wait for a rain. <laughs> Today's a good day for it. It's windy. Yeah, I almost think we could get away with just doing a few of these, but... Sometimes we get 60 mile an hour gusts here. It's pretty, pretty intense. I don't know. <laughs> See how soft that is? Yeah, but I'm serious. As soon as it, the moisture goes away, it's gonna, it's, that's going to dry up and be hard as a rock in a couple of days. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And, uh. So I'm thinking that the dirt's gonna help us in this case. The more it goes down, it'll be stuck in the dirt. But uh, if it sinks 
too low, we can always pull it back up and shim it up on the blocks or cement rocks or something. Cement blocks or cement rocks. Cement socks? <laughs> Let's not keep going with that rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I got all the anchors in. We are good. So the next thing to do is to put one of these end panels up. And in order to do that, they're calling for me to go back and loosen some of these bolts that on these cross members and the one up there. I got to go back and loosen and take those off. I think so I can slide the end the caps over it and then just put them back on. <laughs> All right, so after wrestling around with this thing a little bit, I got it figured out. The directions do call for you to loosen this up first. And the trick is is to have, once you have this cross member loose here, then it makes this one a lot easier to get through. You loosen this bolt, separate the two, flap it over, then put the pipe back in, and then tighten it back down. Then you've got this one up here on the top. And then what I did is I pulled this as tight as I can to try to get the bottom from rubbing on the ground. And then I've got a like a clamp just to clamp it in place to tighten it up. So the next thing is there's a rope inside here. And what I'm going to do is try to pull it as tight as I can and get some of the slack out of this flap here. What I was doing is I was using my foot to kind of pull there you go, see, you can see how that's tightening up the, the rope in there, going around. Now on the instructions, it does say that if there's quite a bit of stress on some of these slits where the cross member can go through, you can take a razor blade and just add another inch or so. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. See if that helps. So I climbed up on the ladder and I pulled that around the pipe, getting as much slack down as I could and then clamped it into place. Having these clamps is really helping me quite a bit. So I've got that clamped into place. Once I get into position, I've got to actually pull this around and cut an insert so that this can go through as well. For some reason, there's not a slit already on there, but maybe they do that because they don't know where you're going to end up being. So. It is kind of scary, but you got to do it. I've removed this cross member. Get it out of the way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this tight and overlap it right there so I can see. I would say right about there. So now what I'm going to do is make a cut. Slide that back on and tighten it. All right, so I have this side tightened down pretty good, going all the way down. Have my little homemade slit that I made for the uh, wind brace to go in. And then as I come down, I've got it wrapped around. There's a lot of extra rope, but I've got it tied off to the turnbuckle here. I made sure that the turnbuckle was all loosened up. So the next thing is to just tighten this up as much as possible and try to stretch that rope as much as I can. Before I do that though, I'm gonna go do the same to the other side and then I'll come back and tighten this. That rope was so long, I just tied the, all the extra off there. I may cut it later, but I was kind of scared to cut it because I didn't know like how much slack. If you ever take this thing down, I don't want the rope going up inside this thing, so. But anyway. That's what it looks like. Just come on over on this side, and I'm gonna first loosen that bolt up there, and then hang this bad boy up. Here's the, the slit for the top.
I got my little temporary clamps up there. Help me hold that thing in place. Now I gotta pull the slack out of this line here. Now see the difference? How this side looks all scrunched up? Now I just need to do that on this side. You're pulling on that. See a little bit of it gathering right here. Yeah, so then what you gotta do is kinda... Spread it evenly a little bit. They do help get it started. All right, so now what we gotta do is cut a slit for. Take that. It's pretty cool how it won't tear anymore. That's what they say. You don't need down more, you need up more. You're trying to go where that bolt is? Yeah. yeah. Let's see if we stick it through here. Yep. All right, we got that, but... All right, I don't know if I cut that big enough, but we will see. Stop it. Unless this thing tears up, it ain't coming apart, that's for sure. <laughs> Make sure that your turnbuckle's all loosened up, and then hook it in there. Next thing is I just temporarily tied off to the turnbuckle to the pipe there just to keep this side in place while I go tighten the other side. So now we're doing something very technical. <laughs> it says to cover the bolts with some gaff or masking tape. That way it doesn't rub. Yeah. And protects the longevity of your cover. This stuff should work just as good as uh, duct tape. Yeah. But... Use what you got, right? Yeah, use what you got. <laughs> so all we do is just tear a square, stick it on. This is the easiest part of the tent. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if we should have done this with the end ones, too. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure that would have been nice, but they didn't give us a step until now, so. <laughs> we didn't look that far ahead we into the future. We didn't. We didn't cheat. No cheating. So if you want to do this before, probably want to hurt. You got to do the top ones up there. All right, sounds good. All right, so we got everything taped, and then we went ahead, and wherever there was a seam from the two poles lining up together, we went ahead and gaffed those as well. We're just thinking about any sharp edges. We want to cover those, and we did it all the way up. And then there was a seam right there. Where the two poles went together and on and on. It's starting to look like it's All right. almost done. <laughs> and now we got the big boy out. Yes, I can see a light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. <laughs> Me too. Hopefully we don't hear no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got everything covered, so we should be good. We're going to attempt to pull this thing over with ropes that we tied to it. If we had more people, I think this would work better, but we're gonna see with just two ropes. Maybe we can tie a third rope and we can both tie two ropes at the same time. And it helps if your husband tells you to throw it over all the bars. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought it would be fun to watch her try to pull it differently than we mine. Spent enough time doing this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Here we go. One for the money, two for the show. Go! All right. Now make sure you go over this last bar over here. Yeah, I think I got it now. <laughs> I'm gonna put the camera on on that where the action is gonna be.
So this hooks into here, into that hole, we think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. There's no other place to, to do it. And then, we're not gonna tighten these all the way down. We're just temporarily kind of getting them all started. And there's like four different warnings not to over tighten this. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna listen to it. We're gonna ease into the ratchet ease strapping. Into the ratchet strapping. And this is just affixed to the yeah. tent already. Cool. So we'll go repeat the other side. Now while we're doing this, we're also making sure that it's up and over. Well, it was. <laughs> get it too tight we won't be able to get the other side no we'll just go do the back real quick one thing we never put in was these little anchors that come with it to do the little curved feet here and my guess is they're not going to do much good in my case because the ground is so soft i'm going to see if i can just push this in see by hand see i was able to push that in pretty much by hand one of the options we love about this tent is the Velcro air vents on all the doors that add airflow and light. Uh, they really, really do make quite a big difference, especially on hot days for us. During the day, like if you want to have the doors shut, just having these open adds quite a bit of light. So I've been wrapping this around to go into the grommets. I'm just taking it underneath the bar and through. And then Tying a giant shoe. And then just give it a little tug, then I drop it and go back. What we're finding out is that we, if we get this side too tight before we do the other side, it tends to go this way or that way. So we're kind of just trying to work and do everything all even. <laughs> All right, I'll start on the other side and we can crisscross. Get it? Crisscross? Ho, 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 ho. His name's Chris, by the way. Loop de loop and pool. And Jean. <laughs> yeah, your tent is looking cool. Hey, I'm going to get my 10,000 steps for today. All right, so we just went back and forth, tightened that a little bit, tied it off. Then tightened that side a little bit and tied it off. And then went back again and just started at one end and worked our slack back out of it. And then tied it off one more time and repeated. I think we did it like three times total. If we have any issues, we'll check it in a day or two once the tent settles into place and stuff. Having this rope to add tension as opposed to a sleeve that you can just slide the frames through was another reason we chose the Rhino Shelter. It really allows you some control to um, try to overcome the flapping of your tent in the wind and stuff. So the next thing to do is to work on these doors. We got some roll-up setups that we got to put on here, fill some pipes with some sand, and get those all set up. Maybe hang some lights in here so we can see once it gets dark tonight. Ooh. So the first thing it calls for is to get this pipe ready to go that slides into the door. Put your end cap on. It says to fill this with sand. Luckily we had the funnel from our skull mold and the play sand from our son's sandbox. Sorry buddy, we'll get you some new sand later. <laughs> so we'll get this all filled up and then we'll show you the next step. So for each roll-up door, they gave me one long rope and they say to bend it in half and cut it into two. So I clamped that side of both the ends. 
So I go over to the other side and I find my halfway point and then I'm gonna cut it. Poke holes above the doors for these black hooks and then you can run your rope through it going down to the door. Choose your spot and install the rope tie-offs using the self-tapping screws. These pipes are a little bit long. My guess is that it's because they're universal for different tents. So I may go back and cut them a little shorter if they're an issue. Right now it doesn't seem like there is, but there it is. All set up. So now we can just roll them up and roll them down. It wasn't too bad. They don't always roll up pretty like that. So the thing is, is you gotta kinda help it. My guess is over time, it's going to uh, get used to doing that and then maybe be a little bit easier. We added some LED lights from Amazon. I think they were like 20 or 40 bucks for the pair. And then we just zip tied a cord going down the frames. They had a little mount right there and I just loosened one of the bolts on the frame and uh, bent it to match the curve of the, of the frame there. And uh, they worked great. This thing holds up really well in the wind. I did set some sandbags there by the front door just to keep the bottoms of the doors from flopping too much. It's been holding up really well. Man, it's bright out here. Who is this? Oh, well, whew. it's been a little over a month now. And Gina and I have been living in this tent. <laughs> Pretty much. You don't even want to see what she looks like. <laughs> anyway, we've seen this thing through rain, sleet, no snow, lots of cold. Sun and cold. Sun, yeah, everything. All jokes aside, this thing has been awesome. It exceeded all of our expectations. We're so glad that we did go with like a heavy duty type tent. The uh, people over at Rhino Shelters were really, really friendly, super great customer service. Uh, they helped us with any of the questions that we had putting this thing together. And Yeah, uh, we called them like three yeah, times before yeah. we pulled the trigger on yeah, it, so yeah. they were very helpful. If you guys still have any questions and stuff, please check below for any links. For those of you who are shopping for tents and stuff, we hope that this video maybe helped shed some light on how easy it may be for you to put together. And, and if you uh, did buy one, hopefully it's helpful. Yeah. You can... <laughs> Sweat along with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, putting it together yeah. or whatever. So, uh, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check some of our older videos, subscribe, and I'm going to go find a razor. Hooray!